Hey guys, it's Steph. Today we're going to be setting up my April 2022 bullet journal pages uh, in my Archer and Olive bullet journal. Uh, before we do that, as usual, we're going to flip through my March Sims theme, see how that's going, and then we will jump right in. Um, as a heads up, I had a bit of retail therapy and bought a bunch of stuff on the Archer and Olive website, including the tropical uh, acrylographs the metallic acrylographs both in 0.7 and then as well as I received the March uh, spring box so you're gonna see I'm using a combination of tropical acrylograph uh, metallic acrylograph the blue and a couple of the calligraphs that came with the spring collection my theme for April is frogs and daisies when I was considering themes I knew I wanted to do frogs um my grandmother loved frogs and her birthday was in april she passed away in august of last year right around my birthday so i kind of wanted to do a theme uh for her and her favorite color was blue she loved frogs april's flower is the daisy so it kind of came together from that um one really cute element that I added after the fact because I knew I wanted some kind of decorative border to make the page feel complete and illustrated. I did these little kind of basic doodles of daisies and then added this swirl and dot which is meant to represent the uh, stem and the leaf. So that's just kind of an artistic interpretation of a daisy's stem and leaf in case you didn't know what those swirly things were. I've said it before, I don't really do floral or organic type uh, doodles usually. I am not really an artist, so believe me when I say I spent a lot of time sketching and trying not to question myself too much about, about this. I knew I didn't want a full on illustrated outline, so nothing's outlined like in black, but I did outline the stem with the acrylograph where the stem and leaf are colored in with the calligraph and you will have to forgive me because throughout this video I'm gonna stumble over which one of those is which that's just inevitable um, yeah so I went with pink daisies because the white while looking really great with the pencil sketch didn't look so great after everything else was colored in so I did go ahead and make the daisies pink as well. And the frog I colored last because he was the most intimidating of the entire page. I literally contemplated not including him, but I knew I had to have this humanoid frog guy who I'm calling Bob, which also happens to be my grandfather's nickname. Um, so this is Bob the blue poisonous dart frog for my grandmother. The quote that I went with does still represent my word of the year, which is healing. And the quote is, a single gentle rain makes the grass many shades greener. It is a quote by Henry David Thoreau, who I read in high school. Um, and yeah, as a side note, I did the middle part of the daisies in the toucan orange fine tip and the fine tip and the broad tip are vastly different colors you can see the broad tip was used in the main daisy and the fine tip was much darker orange so i just took my white sakura gel pen in, in a 10 and colored over the bright orange and that kind of made them more yellow because the white blended with the orange and lightened it up significantly without making it completely white so it made it match the main daisy and then from then on I do just use the broad very gently to not make the dots too big but I like that I didn't really use black for any of the setups um, everything up to the habit and fitness trackers that you'll see in a bit uh, is either outlined in blue or in green so one thing that I did here is I colored Bob's arm that's holding the daisy completely in the metallic 
acrylograph and then realized that that was entirely too dark and bold for what I was looking for. I really wanted him to be vibrant blue, not just dark blue. So I went back and for the rest of the frog, I just outlined him in the metallic and then I will color him in with the same blue Crayola Super Tips that I'm using currently in March for um, my fonts and headers. So I don't know what color that is, it's just a bright blue that I'm using for that. And I think that that effect with the metallic outline and the bright blue filling in gives it more of the look that I was like mentally going for. So it's one of those things where it wasn't planned, but I'm glad that it happened. So this is something that I really struggled with and if you guys use the acrylographs you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, the cream yellow, butter yellow, whatever color this is that I'm using for the stomach of the frog is dried out. Um, I couldn't quite get it to cooperate with me. I tried washing it out, I tried rinsing it. I tried letting it bleed and it was just not really cooperating. Eventually it does, but on this main page, he's got a very scratchy, very rough looking stomach. Um, not to mention a poisonous blue dart frog is supposed to have a sky blue or a light blue stomach, but I wanted him to have kind of just a differentiation there um, and not be blue on blue. So I went with the yellow instead. And then I'm using the same green uh, acrylograph to, or yeah, acrylograph to, from the tropical palette to write all the headers for the entire setup. And then I wasn't super happy with how the daisy was looking, so I did do a couple of really scratchy, it's not a full outline, so I stand by the fact that I don't have like a full illustrated outline of anything but I did just want a little bit of darkness to separate out the petals of the flower visually just so that it didn't look like one big yellow or one big pink blob rather. That's just me checking to make sure everything's dry before I press the page down to the other side. Here for the calendar spread, I did what I usually do five boxes wide by six boxes tall, split across the two pages. Um, I almost again left the daisy white on this page because that's the color that most people associate with daisies, but I did also end up coloring all these in pink as well and the calendar spread typically does become my favorite spread each time. I don't know what it is about a calendar, about the usefulness of it, or the, you know, straight lines of the calendar that makes it feel so uh, grounded, organized, I don't know what it is, but generally the calendar spread is my favorite. So what you see me debating quite a bit on this um, setup is what colors to use for things like the boxes for the calendar. I did obviously go with the green here. I was torn because I use green in basically for basically everything in March because I always use a green theme for March and I used, you know, obviously with The Sims, it's very green heavy. But um, I didn't want to have a situation where it was green and then green and then green for every theme. 
Uh, so I really wanted to lean in on the blue of the frog for April, but it's just didn't end up happening that way. I still love how these pages came out. Actually, I think they came out better than if I had done like a much more blue theme overall. I like that the frog is blue, the flowers are pink, and everything else is green. It's a bright spring green versus the very vibrant Sims green that I used before, so I do think it's different enough that they don't feel too related. But if you're struggling with kind of sticking to the same color palette or feeling bored of a certain color after a period of time, I definitely understand. I used red in every single theme from September through January this year. So definitely, definitely get getting tired of one color. So in this page, Bob is just casually, comfortably leaning against the calendar. He's got his one leg crossed over the other, just relaxed and enjoying the beautiful day that we're having. And I think that this Bob here is the reason that this page is my favorite because he's just so cute sitting there under his little flower umbrella. Uh, speaking of umbrella, that was the other thing. It was supposed to be, if you saw Bob on the cover page, holding his hand out, he was supposed to be feeling the rain. I forgot for like half of this video to go in and add the rain. Um, I actually even forgot to grab the color for the rain. So you'll see me go back here shortly and add a bunch of raindrops on these two pages because I just completely forgot to do it. So these flowers are supposed to be like the daisies are supposed to act like an umbrella and that's part of the theme as well april showers bring may flowers right that's a that's a thing in a poem or a saying that people say i remember it from my childhood so the overall theme was supposed to be frogs daisies and rain I do add and I think I show it to you I do add a bunch of little oh there's the the raindrops um I do add a bunch of little black dots to Bob because he is a blue poisonous dart frog and they do have dark blue and black spots all over their bodies uh, so you'll see me add those as well I already added them on the calendar and then I'll go back and add them on the cover as well which just goes to show that you can think a page is done and still go back and make changes to it if you want to. So here's where there is some black involved because this would just be entirely too much for green. The habit tracker, fitness tracker, sleep tracker, it's all going in here. Bob is working out. Everyone's having a good time. I saw someone posted on the Jashi Corinne Facebook group, their March pages, I believe, and they had a fitness tracker that was similar to this where each of those little boxes is th is big enough to highlight and write down how many steps you took how many miles you ran how many miles you biked if you have a peloton or if you bike outdoors track it with an apple watch however you want to do that um, but they had this really extensive like tracker of all things fitness and habit related and so I took that totally stole it and I put it in my bullet journal for April because now that the weather is getting warmer and we're going to be having better days, um, I totally intend to get out and run quite a bit more and do more biking as well. So I will be tracking those things. I'm also going to be tracking uh, targeted workouts as well as uh, I bought a ring fit for the switch. So I'll be tracking days that I do that and then I will be tracking days that I have a mindfulness check-in or meditation. So all of that will be checked with those mini calendars over there. And all of my habits will go on this bar and I'll just color them in uh, according to how well I feel like I accomplished them. My grandmother actually has, or had, my grandmother had hand weights that were pink like that, that were like one pound or something uh, that she would use for her physical therapy exercises 
um, her strength training for her shoulder. So Bob is using a one pound hand weight and he is heavily perspiring over there, uh, leaning against the tracker. So you can see this yellow, which is the Toucan Orange uh, broad tip, will track my steps. The light green calligraph will track my miles run. And the rain, which is like this yellow gray color, will track uh, biking distance. And then at the end of the month, I can write the totals in those uh, highlighted sections at the bottom. And then I just used an ultra fine pen the 0 0.05 Stadler Tri Plus Fine Liner. Not Tri Plus, that is the, uh, the other Stadler pen that I use all the time. I'll link it in the description. Um, I use that for all the fine writing there. Bob looks pretty creepy when I've only circled his eyes and I haven't colored him in yet and he is really struggling through this workout. Question for you guys. In addition to these standard habit trackers, mood trackers, things like that, because you can see I don't include mood trackers anymore. I didn't for March. I'm not for April, including a mood tracker. Um, I don't miss them. I don't see a mood tracker as something that benefits me personally. Uh, again, they're fun to draw and to fill in, I guess, but generally it's just a bunch of okay and great days. and. I don't, I didn't see the benefit in using a page for that or having to turn back to it every single day to fill it in. So I have done away for now with mood tracking. Um, but aside from habit and mood tracking, what are some things that you guys track in your bullet journal? If you can let me know in the comments, I might want to add that to my own trackers. This one's pretty busy, but there's definitely room for more, which is why I added this giant notes section just for observations about workouts and things like that. And that brings us to my intentions and actions pages. Uh, if you didn't watch my setup video for this bullet journal in uh, December, go check that out. But I had set up a level 10 life spread and my intentions pages are different categories within the level 10 life and some smaller goals towards that area that I want to work on for the month and focus on. Um, that's just to see the progress overall in things like uh, my parenting, my mindfulness, my physical health, mental health, uh, my romantic relationship, things like that. So. That's what I will write in here, a couple of little goals for each category. And then on the right hand side for each day, I will write in what actions I took towards those goals, whether it was a date night or whether it was taking a walk with my daughter or taking her shopping, things like that. Whatever I do towards these goals or to improve those areas will be re written down on the right hand side.
then just like on the other pages, I didn't like the overall look of the flower. It just looked like a bunch of pink. It, there wasn't a lot of clear definition. So the black is just used as a way to give some additional highlights and uh, draw attention to the individual petals of the flower. And then the final page that we are setting up is my <clears throat> brain dump and my mindfulness log. So as usual, the brain dump just has a basic border. In this case, I just did the same daisies I've been doing. A simple doodle, which is just the daisy, and a title, and lots of space to write out my key tasks for April. Um, and then in the right, it'll just be a long list of numbers, and the title's top, which is Line of Day Mindfulness. So I'll write down something that I need to think about for each day, something that I need to meditate on, um, and how that how that goes. <clears throat> I really like the font that I went with for this month. It's kind of like a very swirly but still basic font. It's not quite, I mean obviously it's not a cursive font, but it has a lot of cursive elements with the Y and the capital L and things like that. So I really enjoyed it. And that's pretty much it. We're about to get to the final flip through. If you guys made it through this much of the video, I definitely appreciate you giving me guys like half an hour, giving me half an hour of your day. Um, please like this video if you enjoyed this theme and please subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. I, again, appreciate you guys being here and this theme meant a lot to me with it kind of representing my grandmother. Um, so it was just really um, nice to put together and I can't wait to start using these pages. Until next time guys, I hope you have a good one.